sits down with writer-director Kevin Smith. We take a look at your reactions to the Rogue One trailer and much, much more. Now, from the Lucasfilm headquarters, it's the Star Wars Show. Hello, I'm Peter Townley. And I'm Andy Gutierrez, and this is the Star Wars Show. Huh. You know, usually a news transition happens when I wave my hand. Maybe try it with a little more pizzazz? Star Wars news! Gamescom is currently underway in Germany, where a couple of very cool Star Wars Battlefront announcements were made. First, there were details about the upcoming Battle Station mode for the Death Star expansion pack. The new mode allows you to fly for the Empire in TIEs, or for the Rebellion in X-Wings and A-Wings as you dogfight against TIEs in space. The Death Star expansion pack, with its new vehicles and heroes, will be available to Star Wars Battlefront season pass holders this September. Next, there was an update about the DLC that I'm most excited for, Star Wars Battlefront Rogue One X-Wing VR mission. Developed by Criterion, the experience puts you in the cockpit of an X-Wing battling against the Empire alongside your fellow wingmen on a search and rescue mission. The experience is exclusive to PlayStation VR and will be available for free this holiday season for everyone who owns Star Wars Battlefront. Everyone who owns Star Wars... I own Star Wars Battlefront. Me too. All right. Star Wars Reads, a celebration of Star Wars and reading, is kicking off Star Wars Reads Month this October. This year, special events like author signings, activities, and special readings will be taking place all over the world. Be sure to check out the Star Wars Reads Facebook page for more details. And might we also suggest these fine Star Wars-related reading materials for Star Wars Reads, like Star Wars Episode One Adventures, Trouble on Tatooine, featuring Kitster. Or, if you're more into Star Wars facts, might I suggest the official Star Wars fact file number 123, featuring handsome cover boy Kitster Benai. Two legendary choices from your friends at the Star Wars show. In a bit of feel-good news, the Star Wars Force for Change team and the Star Wars show want to thank everyone who participated in all of the previous Force for Change campaigns. Because of your efforts, UNICEF was able to provide over 4 million food packets to over 31,000 malnourished children in six countries around the world. Sincerely, thank you. Finally, last week, over 30 million of you watched the latest Rogue One trailer across our official Star Wars networks, and more than a few of you had some pretty animated Rogue reactions to the trailer. So, because we asked, and because we wanted to watch a little bit of the trailer again, we compiled them into this nice little package. Enjoy. Ah, the music. The world is coming undone. <laughs> Imperial flags rain across the galaxy. <laughs> Can you be trusted without your shackles? Let's just get this over with, shall we? We have a mission for you. Get chills. <laughs> a major That's weapons shot. test is imminent. We need to know how to destroy it. If you're really doing this, I want to help. Are you in? Good. I've been recruiting through the rebellion for a long time. Who the stormtroopers? destroyed our home. Wow. The <laughs> the fire now. I fear nothing. All is as the Force God. wills it. The captain says you are a friend. I will not kill you. Thanks. <laughs> there isn't much time. Oh my god, that's our eclipse! Every day they grow stronger. <laughs> oh my god, this Winnicott is like giving me all the feels! <laughs> Music's so fantastic! This looks epic! There is a 97.6% chance of failure. He means well. Oh wow. <laughs> I do have goosebumps. I am here with writer director Kevin Smith. Kevin, thanks so much for being on the show, Thank man. Thank you for having and accommodating. I asked that we not sit down so that I did not appear as Jabba the Hutt. As I stand, I appear more like Lando Calrissian. That's what I think in my head. That's you know, that's a mistake Jabba made. 
You think so? Should have stood up. Yeah, that's yeah what, it, it would have kept him out of trouble. Galaxy would have treated him a lot differently yeah. if he just was stood. But people see this fat dude laying down, ladies in bikinis and stuff, they're like jealous of him. How much do you like that Rogue One trailer? I love it a lot. The look of it, the feel of it, the sound of it even. Wah, wah. It's got that. Takes me to 77. It's got that tone yeah. to it that it pulls on all the heartstrings. Well, you know? what, what JJ did insanely well with Force Awakens was get the Star Wars tone pitch perfect. Yeah. So much so that we walked in, into that theater walked out of that theater and he turned the clock back 30, 40 years. We see that shift in tone in mm -hmm. that trailer, the way that they've switched it up with the music, with the piano and that kind of thing. It feels like Rogue One has that kind of uh, melancholy that Empire ending had running throughout a whole movie. Yes, this is your grandpappy Star Wars because it certainly <laughs> looks like and there's a Death Star, but this ain't your grandpappy Star Wars. We're going in a whole new direction. It's almost like I remember reading Splinter of the Mind's Eye when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. That was like the first outside of Star Wars pre-Empire. Seeing the Rogue One trailer calls to mind for me as a longtime Star Wars enthusiast that moment, that moment in time where you're like, oh my lord, yeah, things could be serious as well and grim. And you know, I've always been long out there saying that I've been a massive fan. Empire Strikes Back, one of my favorite films of all time, let alone my favorite of the Star Wars films. Rogue One feels like, even though it's set pre-Star Wars, feels tonally much more like Empire Strikes Back. And we've got these actors who are known for doing some really heavy work, like okay. Forrest Whitaker, Felicity Never Jones. Never heard of her? Who's that? No. <laughs> of course. Look at look who they're yeah. casting. Like when they made Star Wars back in the day, it was uh, fresh face Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford, three people you didn't really know that much about or know that. Now we're making Star Wars movies with like Forrest Whitaker. You all know him. It's nice though. We live in a Star Wars world. I always dreamed of this when I was a kid. Like, you know, I love Star Wars and a lot of people went to the movies, love them. Kids my age, we all love them because so we have the figures and stuff. But, you know, I put that conversation about Star Wars into the movies I made because, well, to be honest, I was like looking for friends, man. Like this was, there was no internet yet. You couldn't find Star Wars fans, like-minded Star Wars fans, unless you went to like a sci-fi con. But the, people get older, some folks aged out of it. And I never did, because I was like, you kidding me? These movies rock. And even my friends, like my contemporaries, would be like, you still talking about those old movies? I'm like, old movies? Are you kidding me? But to me, that's <laughs> the thing, they, they were never old. And now when you think yeah. about it, what a weird notion that somebody would say old movies, especially when Star Wars now continues to regenerate itself. I remember when I got my first office, like right before we made Mallrats, like we rented a little space in Red Bank, and I put like that Yoda statue, like the first rubbery one they sold, life size you get out of comic book stores. I put it like right in the main lobby so when people came in, they knew what I stood for. Mm. You walk into this place every day, you must feel like you made it in life because there's a Yoda I fountain. Do. There's like, there's a, a Stormtrooper, there's Darth Vader, there's like live, big pieces, huge yeah. live action looking pieces. Plus, droids rolling around. Like I ran into Chopper. They let me meet the Chopper droid. Yeah. It's just joy. Everywhere you look, yeah. it harkens back to a, a it's one of the most, found memory from childhood. It's one of the most sincere fandoms there is, mm -hmm. Star Wars fandom, and everyone who's here is a big fan of it, and just, just like me, it's just pinching themselves every day. Right. They get to come and work here. I'm not jealous of many people in life, to be honest with you, but like, you guys got, you guys cracked the code. We're doing pretty good. Yeah. Kevin Smith, check out his YouTube series, Fatman on Batman, and check out Geeking Out Sunday nights on AMC, and we have more Star Wars show coming right up. May, may the force be with you. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> That's our show this week. Big thanks to all of you for your rogue reactions and to Kevin Smith for taking some time to hang out with us. Also, make sure to check out our brand new series, The Star Wars After Show, presented by Verizon, where I gather a panel of Lucasfilm employees to talk more in depth about all the Star Wars from today's show. Watch it this Thursday and every Thursday only on youtube.com slash Verizon. Finally, all of us at The Star Wars Show and Lucasfilm are deeply saddened at the passing of our dear friend and family member, Kenny Baker. Kenny was more than just the man inside R2-D2. He was instrumental in giving the character a heart and soul that will live on forever. Over the weekend, cast and crew such as Mark Hamill, Ewan McGregor, Peter Mayhew, Kathleen Kennedy, and George Lucas shared their memories online. And from all of us here, thank you for everything, Kenny.